um, also, you, you do have to acknowledge Assad has been hostile for decades to Kurds. Who? Assad. Assad. Yeah, probably. Yeah. And um, I, I, from what I researched, or most of the uh, what you would say bourgeois um, uh, media, it's just the Kurds have this, did more assaults on uh, Erdogan's territory than Assad's. I would believe that, yeah. So, um, we all, as Marxists and socialists, we are all pretty much anti Erdogan at this point. So, um, what is your, would you say that you, if you have a problem, if the Kurds, from the graphs I've seen, and Al Jazeera and other Western media's Western media papers and did more attacks on Erdogan's territory. Let's just say the Kurds, hypothetically, in the next year or two years, to over reclaim this fucking go in and take uh, the uh, land from Turkey uh, and leave Syria alone. Would that would that uh, be a problem or not for you? Oh, that's an interesting question. That is an interesting question. Because the relationship between Turkey and the U.S. is pretty complicated right now. Uh, no, exactly. They don't like each other. They hate each other. But they're also economically tied. Exactly. So that's my point. I'm saying, like, I'm arguing if they t because Syria right now is bankrupt, from what I can tell from the U.S. imperialist sanctions and all this other uh, regulations against their economy. Yeah, but, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that was true. So if the Kurds... Attack, which statistically they have attacked more areas of Erdogan's land. If they reclaimed the, the Turkish parts of Turkmenistan, uh, not Turkmenistan, uh, Tur Tur uh, Kurdistan. My, sorry, my correction, uh, Kurdistan. Like if they, if they like, actually claim their land, quote unquote, from Turkey and leave Assad alone, would that be a problem for you? Because right now you're focusing on the Syrian aspect, the Syrian territory. Oh yeah, because that's that, that's what we were debating. Yeah. I, know, I would I say I... if they took what were just plainly Kurdish lands, like they weren't like just grabbing up as much as they could. Yeah, I guess. They, I guess I, I guess I'd be okay with that. Uh, I I know you claim you're, you uh, I, I do think that some aspects that they are reactionary, but like I have to admit, like. Uh, I'm trying to work this problem. I have that thought on top of my head. It's like, they, overall, I don't see their society lasting very long because pretty much every anarchist society that existed or even libertarian Marxist society is crushed immediately, like no matter who it's from. You know, the uh, Magnus area, uh, Catalonia, Spain, we, we, we all know the history of it. I, I see if the Kurds do get liberation, uh, eventually, hypothetically, it will be crushed by any of the forces bordering. Yeah, assuming that uh, nobody signed a formal peace agreement. Peace agreement, exactly. That's and um. Yeah, probably they would. Uh, and I was wondering, um, uh, my my main argument is that the the Kurds, I feel like, they have the right to self determination, even though they are being reactionary in nature. But uh, I'm trying to words properly. I feel like the Syrian uh, war and conflict. Has really silenced the voices of like the struggle of Palestine at the moment. If, if you can get what I'm saying, arguing wise. Um, yeah, I could see how it would divert attention. And overall, I find the arguments for Syria to be much more actually compelling, as you said, with your arguments against New York City Malice versus the arguments of Palestine and Gaza. Remember, you remember you said when you were fighting with Carlos that like people who are on the left were pro-Palestine just stops there. They, they they don't really want to go forth for promoting Assad or the uh, uh, the Kurds. Yeah. So I, I've been looking at like observing it, and like a lot of people who are pro-Palestine in general on the left in the United Kingdom and France can't make the fucking jump to supporting Assad or even the the Kurds, be it quote unquote, if, in this debate. I'm I'm just putting it out there. So like, and people who promote who support Assad tend to, uh, from what I've seen, or uh, the Kurds tend to be really reactionary against Palestine, and I find it to be just very interesting. Vice versa, it's basically the same argument, quote unquote, but different ethnic groups and different tensions. It's if you get if you get what I'm saying. 
And um, my main argument is that, like, overall, um, the arguments that socialism or barbar was it, uh, uh, I forget, socialism whatever, or like, barbarism. Oh, socialism or barbarism was incredibly um, bad, badly argued. But I also want to state, um, with the, uh, another t- like, I, I'm pretty sure I can't remember what another. Uh, I'm trying to remember. The U.S. and I know um, the West in general, when it came to funding Marxism, they funded very uh, various groups within, um, like you said, Ho Chi Minh, and also um, China, which you already addressed. But there's more. They also the U.S. in the 1920s or 18, late 1800s funded the Mongolian uprisings against uh, uh, Japanese imperialism. Um, I don't know that, but that sounds reasonable. And uh, I came across the data from what I've looked at in that geo, and it and it l- looks like the U.S. Fun- funneled well into the way like, after the war, like because apparently the Soviets and the Americans had an agreement of like building up Mongolia's capital. I don't know where the funding stopped because apparently, like the only country the U.S. had relationships with that was Marxist based in the 20th century was Mongolia. So I don't know what the battleground funding with that, with that was, but like. If you, if you know in general, because from my research, it turns out that Mongolia was a gateway point of how Nixon got into agreements with China. I'm going to have to confess a lot of ignorance when it, uh, when it comes to Mongolia. Okay. That's just one of the, the subjects where I, 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 I don't really have any information okay. on. Uh, and, um, in general, like, uh, I kind of feel like, uh, with, I'm arguing, like, I, if the Kurds developed their own nation, and you said that they went, um, and they went, uh, for free market reform due to U.S. imperialism, uh, which is event how a lot of countries happen, but, like, like, uh, I guess in China's a, a example of, which you're against, modern-day modern, modern day Chinese capitalism, I was thinking it more like this. If the Kurdish territory, Kurdistan, becomes a, a U.S. puppet, but not even like it's because it's, uh, if if they develop in free market reforms, I kind of picture it being like a modern day Yugoslavia situation. Actually, that's uh, that's a pretty interesting way to put it. But, and, I, would, uh, but I would also argue that uh, Yugoslavia was industrial, wasn't it? Just, yeah, yeah. It was. It was. Whereas Kurdistan like, kind of doesn't really exist. Like, there's no formal infrastructure. My theory is that if it gets money from the U.S. to the point where it gets industrialized and it tells the U.S. to fuck off, they can have enough enough industrialization to fight back. Yeah. So, like, do you ever see that happening or not? Because, like, it's unclear where you stand. The the role of them industrializing, because they could probably do enough U.S. money to the point they, like, can, like, be their own nation. I could see them doing it, but I, I don't know if it'll happen. It, it depends, because there's, there's other factors that yeah. we're not aware of, like how far the U.S. wants to take this. I mean, well, I, 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 would, I would say that they're probably just going to take it until Syria collapses, and then, uh, you know, completely ditch the Kurds, and then set, oh. up, a, set up a puppet government in the country using the, the FSA. And they'll probably uh, they'll probably squash the Kurds when they do it. Probably, if the Kurds I, want to remain independent of U.S. Independent. policy, then they'll squash them. Yeah. Yes. Which I remember to finish Folsom who said this, and this is true. When it comes to imperialism, the bourgeois class and the CIA class tends to not care about anarchism more than they do actual socialist nations. Because anarchists tend to be incompetent when it comes to building a state. And I'm, I have a lot of anarchist subs, and I'm sorry if you get butthurt by the statement that's true. The history has repeated itself. Yeah, but I don't really think they really would be anarchists. Uh, not about the, the Kurds specifically, I don't really think they would be. I think they would they would build a formal state. Okay, you think so? I do. I actually have said multiple times in videos that I think they want to stay. I don't think they want to be stateless. Like I've said, and a lot of anarchists have thrown ad hominem attacks and insults at me. Like, let's see what happens. Yeah. And uh, it is one of those things where I got to see what happens. But I don't think they're gonna re- they're gonna 
remain a stateless people. Okay. You can't claim to be a country and then not have a state. Yeah. Like, it's just, yeah. it's kind of strange. Um, I can't remember. I, I, I think I, I saw screenshots of them, but I don't know if it's true or not. Like, can you, can you film me if it's true or not? I saw, like, um... Uh, uh, the DPRK making pro solidarity statements to the Kurds, and I was I was I couldn't find actual sources to it. Pro the DPRK like, making pro Assad statements. The pro Assad and uh, PGK uh, Kurd statements. I don't believe I've ever heard the DPRK mention the Kurds. There, it was there were screenshots going around Twitter, so I don't know if we're fake or not. So I was I was, I, I was wondering if you clarify or not. I never heard that. Okay, never mind. So I, I, I can't confirm or deny. Okay. Um, uh, and also, my my last point, like I want to, like, it's not really an interview, but it's more like a debate. I'm trying to like get my arguments out there, like like because my arguments aren't really thought out because this is a whole fucking situation that's up in the air right now, like completely. Yeah. Uh, you know, I I honestly don't think. Um. If the Kurds do get their own territory, uh, I'm trying, like, how, if, like, I'm interested to see if, like, how that would, I feel like a Kurdish state in general would just cause more fucking war in the Middle East because all the border nations hate that nation already. So it would just make a packed triangle and try to, like, destroy them. Well, that's definitely a risk. Yeah. You know, and if there was uh, a simple situation, simple, yeah. simple solution to the Middle East, we would have had it by now. Exactly, and I, I don't, I don't know. I, I feel like the Kurds deserve their own territory, but I also feel like it's going to fuck up everything so much worse. I would say that they do deserve their own territory, no matter what. But yeah. that could, yeah, that could make things worse. Uh. Uh, now, now on the topic, I want to move on. Just, uh, going to my bullet point, I'm uh, going to the point of ISIS. Okay, I don't think ISIS is uh, okay. Let me word, words properly. You claim ISIS is a U.S. puppet. I don't. I think they're a Saudi Arabian puppet, and they're inha- inherently funded by the U.S., not directly funded by the U.S. Okay. So, like, the U.S. gives Saudi Arabia money, and they just give it to ISIS, and because that money is already given to Saudi Arabia, they can't do anything about it. Well, if that would be the case, then the U.S. would cut them off. They can't because of oil, quote-unquote. They need that oil, like that black gold. I'm sure they could work something out. I mean... Yeah. It, the, the, the United States and Saudi Arabia have pretty much the same enemies. Pretty yeah, I know. Because, like, the obvious exception would be Qatar. And, and Israel, quote-unquote. No, Israel and um, uh, Saudi Arabia are building formal ties. I mean, they they hurl they hurl shit at each other, but nothing ever happens. True. Um, also, um, the bef- like uh, I pretty much got from all my bullet points. I have one more, just one more statement I want to address with you, Jason, just before we cut this off. Yeah. Okay. Um. You tend to not really address the bullshit Putin's been doing lately with the homosexuality ban and, the, like, the purgings in the Chechnya. Yeah, I'm not... I'm not entirely certain that that's true or what the whole story is there. I mean, I don't believe that the Russian government wants that to happen. Okay. I, I believe, like, radical... Um, not, not even necessarily radical, but Islamic element in that area, which is, you know, which yeah. is historically uh, Islamic, would do that. I, I don't... Yeah. I don't deny it. Like, yeah, you know, they would do something like that. I just haven't seen any real good information yet. If it is going on, and Russia's not doing anything about it, then that would be a rightful criticism. The only thing I've seen legitimately was from Amnesty International. I don't really even trust them. These reports seem to be very off to their hinges lately. Well, I mean, it would depend on what they're showing as evidence. If they had, like, you know, hundreds of people that were suffering from it... Yeah, I would tend to think that that's probably true. Yeah, it, it's not. Uh, it's not like Amnesty International is devoid of altruistic individuals. I'm sure they are there, yeah. but you know, the upper in the organization, you know, the different question. Yeah.
Thank you for watching. If you like this program, then please head over to my Patreon page and set up a monthly donation. It's your donations that keep this program running. Also, if you would like, please rate, comment, subscribe, and share in various social media.